upon, set thee down upon this flowery bed, while I thy amiable cheeks do coy, and step mock the roses in thy sleek smooth head, and kiss thy fair large ears in thy gentle joy. Where is Peas Blossom? Betty! Scratch my head, Peas Blossom. Where is Monsieur Cobweb? Ready! Monsieur Cobweb, good Monsieur, get you your weapons in your hand and kill me a red-hipped humblebee on the top of a thistle. And good Monsieur, bring me the honey bag. Do not fret yourself too much in the action, Monsieur. And good Monsieur, have a care if the honey bag break not. I would be loath to have you overflown with a honey bag, Signor. Where is Monsieur Mustard Seed? Ready. Give me your knife, Monsieur Mustard Seed. Pray you leave your courtesy good, Monsieur. What's your will? Nothing good, Monsieur, but to help Calvary Cobweb to scratch. I must to the barbers, Monsieur, for methinks I marvels hairy about the face. And I am such a tender ass, if my hair do but tickle me, I must scratch. What, would thou hear some music, my sweet love? I have a reasonable good ear in music. Let's have the tongues and the bones. Or say, sweet love, what does thou desire us to eat? Echo provender. I could munch your good dry oats. Methinks I have a great desire to a bottle of hay. Good hay, sweet hay, hath no fellow. I have a venture to spare that shall seek the squirrel's hoard and fetch thee new nuts. <gasps> well, I pray you, let not your people disturb me. For I have an exposition of sleep come upon me. Sleep thou, and I will wand thee in my arms. So doth the wood vine, the sweet honeysuckle gently and twist. The female ivy saw in rings the barky fingers of the elf. Oh, how I love thee! Oh, how I don't on thee! Welcome, good Robin. Seest thou this sweet sight? Her dotage now in grew begin to pet thee. And gentle puck. Take this transformed scalp from off the head of this Athenian swain, that he, awaking when the other do, may all do Athens back again repair, and think no more of this night's accident, but as the fierce vexation of a drink. But first I will release the fairy queen. <laughs> and do face this house triumphantly, and will bless it to all better prosperity. And there shall the pairs of faithful lovers be, wedded with Theseus in all jollity. Fairy king, attend and mark, I do hear the morning lark. Then, my queen and silent sad, trep we after night shade, we the grove can compass soon, swifter than the wandering moon. Come, my lord, in night flight. Tell me how it came this night that I was sleeping here was found with these mortals on the ground. Go, one of you, find out the forest that, for now, our observation is performed. And since we have the favorite of the day, my love shall hear the music of my hounds uncouple in the western valley. Let them go. Dispatch, I say, and find the forest there. We will, fair queen, up to the mountain's top. Mark the musical confusion of hounds and echo in conjunction. I was with Hercules and Cadmus once, where in a wood of cray they bade the bear with hounds of Bertha. Never did I hear such a gallant chiding, besides the groves, the skies, the fountains. Every region near seemed all one mutual cry. I never heard so musical a discord. But soft, what nymphs are these? Good morrow, friends. Saint Valentine is past. Begin these woodbirds but to couple now? Uh, pardon, my lord? I pray you all stand up. I know you two are rival enemies. How comes this gentle concord in the world? 
that hatred is so far from jealousy to sleep by hate and fear no enmity. My lord, I shall reply amazedly, half sleep, half waking. But as yet I swear, I cannot truly say how I came here. But as I think, for truly as I would speak, but now I do bethink me. So it is I came with Harmia hither. Our intent was to be gone from Athens, where we might, uh, without the peril of the Athenian law. But my good lord, I wot not by what power, but some power it seems to be. I love the Harmia, merited as this now, as it seems to me now, for in my remembrance of an idol god, which in my childhood I did doubt upon, and all the faith and virtue of my heart, the object and pleasure of thine eye, is only to Helena, to her, my lord. Was I betrothed ere I saw Hermia? But like a sickness I began to loathe this food, but as in health to come to my natural taste, now I wish it, love it, long for it, and forevermore be true to it. Fair lovers, you are fortunately met. Of this discourse we more will hear anon. Aegeus, I will overbear your will, for in the temple, by and by with us, these couples shall eternally be knit, and for the morning now is something worn. Our purposed hunting shall be set aside. Away with us to Athens, three and three. We'll hold a feast in great solemnity. Come, Hippolyta. These things seem small and indistinguishable, like bottom mountains, turret and declines. Methinks I see these things with parted eye, when everything seems double. And so methinks. I have found Demetrius, like a jewel, mine own, and yet not mine. Are you sure we are awake? It seems to me that yet we sleep, we dream. Do you not think that the Duke was here? He bid us to follow him. Yea, and to follow the her. And he did bid us follow into the temple. Why then, we are awake. Let's follow him, and by thy way, let us recount our dreams. When my cue comes, call me, and I will answer. My next is, um, most fair Pyramus. Hey ho! Peter Quint! Flute the bellows mender! Snout the tinker! God's my life, stolen hence, and left me asleep. I will get Peter Quint to turn the ballad of this dream, and it shall be called Bottom's Dream, because it hath no bottom. <laughs> and I shall sing it at the latter end of a play, before the Duke, the adventurer. To make it more gracious, I shall sing it at her death. House. Has he come home yet? He cannot be heard of. Out of doubt, he is transported. If he come not, then the play is marred. It goes not forward, doth it? It is not possible. There is not a man in all of Athens to play Pyramus but he. No, he hath simply the best wept of any handicraftsman in Athens. Yea, and the best person too. He is a very paramour, <laughs> sweet voice. You must say, had it gone. A paramour is, God bless us, a thing of naught. Masters, the duke is coming from the temple, and there is two or, or three lo lords and ladies more married. If our sport had gone through, we'd all been paid men. Oh, so we did believe Bossom. But he lost sixpence a day during his life. He could not have escaped sixpence a day. And the duke cannot give him sixpence a day in playing paramus. I'll be hanged. He would have deserved it. Six pence a day in Pyramus or nothing. Where are these oh, lads? No. Where <laughs> are these hearts? They almost happy hour. Masters, I could discourse wonders, but do not ask me what. But if I tell you, I am not true Athenian. I'll tell you everything right as it fell out. Let us hear, sweet bottom. Not a word of me. All that I will say is the Duke hath died. Get you your apparel together, good strings to your beards, ribbons to your pots. 
will meet presently at the palace. Let every man look for all his part, for the short and the long is our play is preferred. Let this be a clean linen, and let not he who played the lion pare his nails, for they will hang out as the lion paws. And most dear actors, eat no garlic or onions, for we are to offer sweet breath. And I will not doubt, but to hear them say it is a sweet comedy. No more words. Away, go, away! <laughs>